6th chapter of 1 Corinthians said, Don't you know that uh, the, the saints shall judge the world? Well, all you have to do is turn back to Psalms 150, and there it tells you that the saints are going to judge this world. So God is going to commit all judgment to the Son. Jesus said that God had committed all judgment into his hands. And then the saints are, are reigning with him nationally. They're going to share in that judgment in this world down here. And that's those that are caught up on high, as we say. Those that go with Jesus when he comes. And it's just a short while out in front of us till Jesus Christ is coming. And the ones that are worthwhile. I, I don't like to use the word worthy. I like to use the word worthwhile. Those that are worthwhile. Those that he can do something with. And they have Bible sense enough. They've got a life behind them. They've got a, a, a superstructure of truth built in their life. They're the ones that's going to be eligible to reign with Christ over this world for a thousand years. Look here. None of us has conquered ourselves yet. We haven't reigned over ourselves yet. There's the times that you know that we're weak and we have to repent. And we're not always as smart as we ought to be. We don't always make the move that we ought to make. We don't always treat people like we ought to treat them. And that's because we have no rule over ourselves. And Solomon said, uh, he that has no rule over his spirit is like a city with its gates broken down and no walls around it. Now that's how vulnerable we are to the attacks of Satan and the flesh uh, if, if we have no rule over our spirit. If you can't rule your spirit, if you can't rule your spirit, rule your disposition, rule your life, if you don't have the power of knowledge and the power of God on you to help you rule yourself, you're up against an unruly piece of flesh, I tell you, because human beings are natural born rebels. We were born in rebellion against God. Our parents rebelled against God. And they passed those curses on to us, and we're still wrestling with them uh, way down here 6,000 years later. So you see, we've, uh, if we, we've got to have rule over our spirit. And then the Bible said uh, uh, that he that has rule over his spirit is mightier than he that conquers a city. And he was talking about those cities back there, walled up with big walls, fortified cities. We don't have big walls around cities today. We don't have uh, forts built everywhere to keep uh, people from other uh, towns or cities from invading us. But that's the way they had to do back there. People so mean and devilish and low down and dirty that you had to put a wall around everything. You had to have a bodyguard wherever you went. It's getting almost that bad now. Locks don't do any good anymore. And policemen doesn't do any good anymore. And so we're, we become a, a, a broken law here in the United States. But back in those days, they built walls around their cities and they protected their people with uh, somebody guarding, walking around on that wall all the time. And Solomon said, if you have rule over your spirit, you've got more power in your life. You're mightier than a soldier that would go up in war against a big wall city and break it down and strip the city and take everybody out of it. So if a person wants that kind of power, you've got to do something about it here. Here's where it all starts, right here. And it starts more or less at the altar bench or wherever you make your altar. There's where it starts in our life. And Jesus said, or Paul said, He that has begun a good work in you, when did it begin with you? When? When? Just stop and think, when, when's your spiritual birthday? Do you remember it? Can you remember it? Can you recall it? Can you see the scene? Do you know what town it was in? Do you have any idea? Do you ever call that back to remembrance? Paul said in the book of Hebrews, But call to remembrance the former days, the past days, in which you were illuminated. Well, we were illuminated. Illuminate means we, lit, we were lit, lit up. We become a light in the Lord. And the light of heaven shined into our life right there. And so we must call that day back once in a while. Give it a serious thought. How long have you had the Holy Spirit? How long have you been a Christian? And so we need to, to reminisce. We need to look back and uh, uh, relive our life in our mind, whether we re uh, could ever relive it or not in the place. But you can sure relive it in your mind. And if there's anything back in your record that's against you, the Holy Ghost can take that to you, bring that to your remembrance. It can do it. I don't care if it's four years ago that you committed that sin. If you're honest before God, you need to repent of that sin. The Holy Ghost can reveal that to you. And you and just take your mind right on back to that instance that happened. And you never did get forgiveness for that. It's still on your record here. Maybe it's 20 years ago. Maybe it's 20 days ago. But the Holy Ghost can bring that to your remembrance if you want him to. 
I'll admit it's a painful operation. Sometimes it's very blushing. Sometimes it's very they're scary for the Holy Spirit to show you something that you did in your life somewhere and you haven't repented of that. It, it, it doesn't feel very good to have your conscience invaded by condemnation and by the guilt of sin. But it's the only remedy for a human being. It's the only remedy for we're all going to face our sins. Everybody's going to face their sins. Everybody's going to face their sins. And the sooner we face them and the, and the quicker we get it out of the way, the better off we are. For Paul said, some men's sins go on before. That's, that's so that, uh, uh, that the Holy Ghost reveals them. Or their memory serves them good. And they, they know what they've done since they've had the Holy Ghost. And they said, some men's sins go on before to judgment. That's so that find them out here and repent of them here. Straighten them up right here. They're gone. They're gone. They've already been judged and they're gone when you get forgiveness for that. But he said, some men's sins follow them. They follow them. Now, that's the kind we want to deal with and watch ourselves here. The sins that follows us into the judgment. So if you don't want a big trailer of sins following you into the judgment, then here's a place to get rid of them. Right here. Right here. Right now. Come clean with yourself and God and everybody else. And if you don't get rid of them here, then they're going to trail you into the judgment. And they'll be waiting for you in the final resurrection. Those sins will be waiting for you. And it just depends on... Uh, how many you've committed, how deep they are, how possible it is for you to do anything about it as to whether you're going to live very long after you resurrect. Billions of people are going to die after they resurrect and they'll never resurrect again. Billions is going to be resurrected and there's going to be billions of them that's going to be saved and get everlasting life. There's going to be billions of others that's going to, uh, that's going to die again and never will resurrect again. Did you get that? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear that? Well, we're going to be resurrected to be judged. To be judged because we fail to be judged back here. Therefore, we've got a judgment facing us. And he said uh, that we uh, are, are going to face the judgment. We have, we have an appointment with death. It is appointed and a man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. So you see, there's a judgment coming up for some people that die here and are not thoroughly, completely, absolutely judged of everything they've ever done here and, and enter heaven clean without a thing on their record. So everything else is going to resurrect. And when people resurrect, that doesn't guarantee them they're going to live in that new earth over there. That gives you no guarantee you're going to live forever just because you resurrect. My goodness, here the widow's son of name resurrected and Lazarus resurrected, but that didn't guarantee them a home in heaven just because the Lord brought them back to life again. Well, what's the difference in the Lord resurrecting a man that's been dead four days or a man has been dead 4,000 years? What's the difference? If he just gets his natural life back again, that's all he's got. And if Lazarus didn't do anything about it after he resurrected from the dead over there, then Lazarus died again and he's going to stay dead a long time. But we hope that he, he reached to perfection, don't we? We hope that he uh, made it in the bride of Christ. We hope the widow's son of Nain had Jesus resurrected from the dead. We hope uh, the, the little girl of the preacher's little daughter over there, 12 year old girl, that Jesus resurrected from the dead. We just hope, we just hope that little girl grew up in the church over there and went on with God and appreciated the fact that the Lord resurrected her uh, life and gave her her life back again. So it is 1,000 years from now, or even if it's 10,000 years from now, of course it isn't, but if it's 10,000 years from now that people would resurrect, it doesn't make any difference how long they've been dead with the Lord. For he calls those things as though they are not, and uh, even makes things, uh, uh, quickens the dead and calls those things that are not as if they already were, uh, the scriptures teach us. So the all-powerful, almighty God has the last word. He has the bottom line word in every one of our cases, and we have to reckon with him. So we must watch ourselves here. All things are, are naked and open, naked and open <clears throat> in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. <clears throat> so these are some of the things that I've been teaching here for years. And you'd be surprised if I would make a, a questionnaire here on some of these things I've been teaching night in and night out, day in and day out for 33 years here. You'd be surprised if I'd make up a little questionnaire and pass it out to all you folks and have you answered. And uh, you, you might just find out how little that you listened or that you paid attention when you're sitting here in the building. I'll tell you, this is for keeps. I tell you, this is not just another church here. This is not just another body of people 
This is God's people. This is the kingdom of God.